Hi, and welcome once again to the North Lodge Cottage Garden. Now, if you are easily offended and don't like bad language, I'm gonna ask you now to continue scrolling and find another video to watch. It is April and National Gardening Month continues, crescending in National Garden Week at the very beginning of May. My inbox, once again, is absolutely brimmed full, both here on Instagram and on YouTube, always with the same question. And excuse me, for dramatical purposes, I'm going to do this in acting form. Ah! Help me. Ah! My roses are under attack. Ah! There are green fly everywhere. Now, what do I spray them with is always the question I get asked. And excuse my language, but please stop fucking spraying things on everything. There is no need. And to understand why you simply do not need to spray everything in your garden to completely cleanse it of black fly, white fly and aphid, you need to understand a little more about the food chain. Here at North Lodge, we spent the day milling about doing lots of different tasks and watching the blackbird with beaks full of worms and mites and watching the wrens all over here in the wildflower meadow work and find little bugs and things that they're feeding to their young. Black fly, white fly and aphid make up the very, very first foundation stones of the ecological food chain in the garden. As the garden starts to wake up and all plants put on really, really lovely, strong, sappy growth that's really tender and soft, you have a ex huge explosion in the population of sap feeding insects. White fly, black fly, aphid, things like mealybug. They're everywhere at this time of year. It is spring, breeding season for all creatures. And those bugs are what feeds the bottom end of the food chain. So unless you have those as a starting point in your garden, you will never end up with lots of lovely ladybirds. You'll never end up with lots of lovely lace wings. You'll never end up with lots of lovely hoverflies because all of their larvae absolutely feast on aphids. White fly, black fly, all of those together. You also have to take into account that if you do, for any reason, decide to reach for that bottle of chemical spray and eradicate those black fly, white fly and aphid from your garden, they're not almost completely dead instantaneously. Anything that feeds on that plant for a certain amount of time, I don't know how long it is here, but it's going to be at least 14 to 21 days. Uh, anything that drinks the sap of that plant is then full of chemical itself. So for instance, that's a very large, great big fat brown aphid uh, that in a larvae form ate a little bit of chemical, wasn't enough to actually kill it. But that aphid was then consumed and taken to a nest full of baby sparrows. Those babies were then fed dozens and dozens and dozens of brown aphids, all containing the same harmful chemical. You're leading to literally nest swalls of dead chicks. Not something I'm prepared to put up with here. I've never lost a colony of bees yet. I haven't been a beekeeper for very long. My bees are just about through the winter and are surviving. But one of the biggest causes of death of bee colonies is the spraying of chemicals. Indirectly, they take that back to the hive. They feed that to the larvae. They feed that to the queen, even worse. And then everybody in that hive dies. So please, before you reach for your chemicals and you start spraying everything in your garden, calm the fuck down and just take a breath. Nobody is killing anybody, let alone you. Please put the spray down. The aphids, the black fly, the white fly, they are the fundamental beginning of the food chain in the garden. And if you want to incorporate pollinators, ladybirds, lacewings, hoverflies, even wasp larvae into your garden to control these things, you have to allow that population to almost grow and boom at this time of year from April all the way through to mid-May before you even think about going and washing them off. Uh, so please don't even go out with your bottle of uh, your Eco Ecova uh, washing up liquid in a spray bottle and start hosing them off because things actually physically need to eat them. Otherwise you don't end up with all of those lovely creepy crawlies in your garden that are gonna keep on top of them. It is a very, very fine balance, that circle of life. And you have to have that fundamental stepping stone at the very beginning, have to have that population explosion here at the very, very 
very beginning of the season to then feed a, uh, the ladybird larvae and all those other things that are then going to keep on top of that explosion later on in the summer. So for the time, calm the fuck down, your roses aren't dying, nobody is being infested with black fly and white fly. It is very, very natural. If you have any questions on this subject, please don't hesitate to ask me a question and don't forget to like, follow and share both here on Instagram and on YouTube.